Alright, so if you guys remember where we last left off, we had just two propine tanks, and we needed to get a third one because I had decided that just one, or two rather, is not going to make the machine long enough to operate continuously. So, that's essentially what I'm doing now. I'm welding on this third tank here. As you can see, a lot of welding to do. By the way, if anybody wants to support me, we do have merch, naturejab.com slash merch. Also have a Patreon as well. I appreciate you guys so much. So this was definitely a multi-day process. So in between, we had some rain, you know, you see the rust on there. But you know, we did, so what I, essentially what I've done here, right? Is six passes of welds on every single joint. So six going around the tube all the way. And that's a lot. But once we did it, Look at the size of this absolute chad of a machine here. It's over a hundred inches long. It doesn't even compare. It literally is. It doesn't even like. It. Right, you know what it is. Building the next plastic to fuel reactor here. Past one behind us. We got the manway, the lid, and today we'll be welding the bloody thing on. So when it came to welding the manway on, it actually was a little bit of an interesting situation because we had a big gap like a huge gap, like a clothing brand gap, type of gap. So I actually ended up getting some uh, metal rods, right? Some little small metal round tubes. Not even tubes, they're just rods. And I just bent them around the thing as you see to fill in the gap. Look, I guess it's kind of cheating. It's like the equivalent of using a gigantic filler wire for your welding spool. But I said, you know what? I am not gonna sit there and try to fill in literally a one inch gap all the way around because that's just absolute nonsense and you know what i will be honest using that technique of those rods those filler rods actually worked really well the welding process was really smooth i had really small gaps i had to fill and i just you know how we do it i had to do six passes all the way around just made sure you know my heat was good that i was tying in right into that metal and just you know everything was melting together nice and good and it turned out pretty well so the manway was on and i painted all of my welds because i was tired of my welds rusting because you know i know it's just surface level rust it's not gonna actually damage it after just a few days even a few weeks of rust but i was like you know it's an ugly look and why have them rust if they don't have to so i just painted it black i found this semi-gloss high temp black paint and i'm like you know what that stuff actually looks pretty dang good now take a look at the penetration on this weld because we welded on the outside right this is the weld that was on the outside of the tank and it the heat of that weld literally penetrated to the inside so that, that just goes to show there's some good welds here so at that point now i wanted to weld on the legs because this thing it's huge, it's heavy, and I just had it propped up on bricks this whole time. That's kind of risky though, because it could have, you know, rolled off at any time pretty much. I didn't have things on the side, like this big rust tube you see behind it to support it. So I went ahead, I was like, you know, it's time to wood on these legs. Because here's the main thing we wanted to weld on the manway because I had to be spinning the thing around to weld it. But after the manway was on, 
it doesn't need to be spun around. I now need to know what is up and what is down. So now I want on the legs, so I know what's up, I know what's down. And then I take off this uh, the cover around the valve here. All these things are pretty simple. You know, the hardest thing is really just getting the initial things blooded, the, the three different joints blooded together. But once you do that, everything else, you know, you've seen me do this with Mark IV, everything else starts to just come together pretty quickly. The next hardest thing would be to build the blades. Those aren't really even tough, but they're just tedious. Kind of like the wave guides, it's just a lot of stuff to do, and it takes a long time. But, you know, things like the blades have some, you know, tolerances that you don't have to really uh, worry about as much. Because they can be a little bit imperfect, but things like these welds have to be, you know, they don't have to be perfect, but they need to be completely airtight, right? So, anyways, at that point, I really liked the look of that black semi-gloss paint just on the welds, and I was like, I'm just going to paint the whole thing, the whole ordeal here, because, honestly, I was kind of like, why not? I did also test that propane powder coating on there and see, is it high temperature? And it actually was, I took a blowtorch right to it and held it there for 10 seconds and didn't catch on fire so i was like you know what? i don't even have to grind off this powder coating because it's it's already high temperature resistant i can really just paint right over it it's just always better if something looks consistent than you know some some black and white mosaic going here so i was like let's just go ahead and paint this whole thing and I really like it. I think it goes well because this is just semi-gloss. I might actually go over it with some actual full gloss high temperature paint. But I think the semi-gloss or some type of gloss works really well because we know the Manway is stainless steel which is reflective. And now the whole body of the reactor is reflective as well. So it all goes together very nice. So take a look at that. I'm sorry for the shaky camera here. Sometimes I go and grab the camera after I do work and my hands are really shaky after work because you know, between welding and spray painting and hitting things with hammers, your hands start to get pretty shaky. But look at that Nature Jab logo with the black. That was exactly what I saw in my mind because I was kind of between, you know, should we make this black and green? Should we make it green? But I was like, if we make it black, that Nature Jab logo will pop. So now I had to take off the valve and I did this differently than any other reactor. I knew this reactor was gonna be heavy and have a lot of mass. So I use that to my advantage because since the reactor is so heavy, I didn't have to strap it to a tree. The reactor itself <laughs> is gonna hold down that valve. So we took off the valve, very simple, like we've done before. And that was pretty much it for this little bit of updates on the reactor. Thank you guys for watching.